I've heard yes. about Section 42 transfers. And uh, since I'm not a conveyancer and I don't deal with uh, that side of life very often, my lovely conveyancers are stuck with that. Don't you want to explain? So for me, but to benefit of the viewers as well, what's this uh, Section 42 transfer sure. thing? So a section 42 transfer is actually one of the very few, um, very few places that you find that uh, the law and tax meet very directly. And it starts becoming a question of uh, lawyers, tax practitioners and conveyances actually coming uh, coming together to, to, to achieve certain results. Um, so this actually merits a nice big conversation, maybe uh, if people are interested, we can pose questions around this. So Section 42 transfers is, uh, is, is the thing around property investors because they've heard about it and there's people that speak about it. And it's, it's basically the process of taking your existing assets and moving them into the correct structure. So I always speak about structuring and making sure that as an investor, you have the right structure that fits your needs, right? That's not, it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's like you have needs and you need a structure for your needs. But there's always the problem where I can set up your structure today, but there's residual things that weren't there before because you started in your journey a couple of years ago. So now you're sitting with stuff in the wrong structure or in your personal name or whatever the case is, wherever it's not supposed to be. So the section 42 is one of the mechanisms that we use where we move certain assets into companies um, in exchange for shareholding. So in terms of the Companies Act, it's actually an asset for share transfer. Um, and basically the Benefit, I probably should have started with this before I bored people with all this detail, but the benefit about Section 42 is because it's an intercompany transaction, you don't pay taxes on it. And that's the big one. So that's the exciting part about it is people like the Section 42 because they don't pay transfer duty, they don't pay STT, uh, which is securities transfer tax, and they don't pay capital gains tax, right? So we use this mechanism to move the asset into the investment structure and avoid any tax consequences in the move. So that's the upside, you know, good news to everyone, right? There's a way of doing mm. it. Uh, there are downsides. And I think this is where sometimes when people read Section 42, they get super excited, but they don't quite see where the downsides are. So the, the, bear in mind, Section 42 doesn't mean that you don't pay tax. It just means that you defer the payment of tax. So at some point or another, somebody is going to pay tax. So you get this into your investment structure and you just halt the payment. But when this property gets sold at some point or another, it's going to get sold by looking at the original cost that you acquired it for right at the beginning. And it basically almost ignores the fact that it's been transferred because it looks at that value. So if you're looking at a capital gain, you're going to look at a capital gain right from that initial value all the way till now. So, uh, yeah, there are upsides, but you do need to understand the downsides. And that's kind of part of the, the, the wealth planning uh, conversation. Um, so I think that kind of answers it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I normally get many, many questions on that. So I suppose, yeah, we'll take it from there. Maybe next week there'll be something else. I'm glad you say it like that because I always say to everybody, if you're not going to pay tax ever on something, it's probably illegal. So yes. just know taxes will be paid where and how we can work around. But uh, at some at some level, you're going to pay tax. It's like it you're going to pay tax, you're going to die. Pizza. This is the two things yeah. we know about life. <laughs> and some will always get its piece of the pie. It just depends when. And as somebody told me this in a very interesting way. Uh, so remember, SARS uh, promotes certain things like claiming input tax and Section 42s and stuff like that. SARS is effectively also in the business of making sure that taxpayers stay in the country, that we pay our taxes. Mm -hmm. That's why SARS can't just go charge whatever tax rate it wants. The reality is, it needs to be competitive because we live in a world where countries compete with each other on that basis. So we need to bear in mind that 
things like this are there. It's not like, oh, it's not a loophole. SARS does it because people need that incentive to be able to do an asset for share and not have to pay tax on it. So SARS understands that certain basic mm -hmm. needs are there for business people. Um, so use the knowledge as the advantage and the tool to get that advantage. But don't ever think that you're swindling SARS uh, mm. because if they find something, uh, you're, yeah, you're going to get. And I've looked at a lot of like reportable arrangements and then advices on it. And that's the problem. Like it, even SARS has this expectation that you report something that you seem to think is dodgy because if they find out later, but those penalties come like rushing in. Well, that and nobody really looks good in orange. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>